Peter, uh, it's, it's not that it's being here with you. He gave me one announcement to give you, which is there is a driving service today at Bayonne. It begins at 3.30. Could you please, if you go and be here at least 15 minutes before the start? Now, you may notice when I come to put on the mask and gloves for communion, I may take a little bit longer because I found that my glasses steam up with the mask. So you'll have to give me a little bit of leeway here to try to be clear. But the whole order service is on your screen, and we begin by saying, The Lord be with you. The Lord be with you. To the only God our Savior, through Jesus Christ our Lord, be glory, majesty, dominion, and authority before all time and now and forever. Amen. Amen. We say together the College for Purity. Almighty God, to whom all hearts go, all desires go, and from whom the secret of slavery, cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of the Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you, and worthy to have our life in your holy name, through Christ our Lord. Amen. Hear what our Lord Jesus Christ says. You shall love the Lord your God. Chapter 11, 
beginning at the first verse. I ask them, has God rejected his people? By no means. I myself am an Israelite, a descendant of Abraham, a member of the tribe of Benjamin. God has not rejected his people, whom he foreknew. Do you not know what the scripture says of Elijah? How he pleaded, pleased with God against Israel. For the gifts and the calling of God are irreparable. Just as you were once disobedient to God, but have now received mercy because of their disobedience. So they have now been disobedient in all of that. By the mercy shown to you, they too may now receive mercy. For God has imprisoned all in disobedience, so that he may be merciful to all. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Hear the gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ, according to St. Matthew, Chapter 15, beginning at verse 10. Glory to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Then he called the crowd to him and said to them, Listen and understand. It is not what goes into the mouth that defiles a person, but it is what comes out of the mouth that defiles. Then the disciples approached and said to him, do you know that the Pharisees took offence when they heard what you said? He answered, Every plant that my heavenly Father has not planted will be uprooted. Let them alone. They are blind guides of the blind. And if one blind person guides another, both will fall into a pit. But Peter said to him, Explain this parable to us. Then he said, are you also still without understanding? Do you not see that whatever goes into the mouth enters the stomach and goes out into the sewer? But what comes out of the mouth proceeds from the heart, and this is what defiles. For out of the heart come evil intentions, murder, adultery, fornication, death, false witness, slander. These are what defile a person. But to, but to eat with unwashed hands does not defile. Jesus left that place and went away to the district of Tyre and Sidon. Just then a Canaanite woman from the region came out and started shouting, Have mercy on me, Lord, son of David. My daughter is tormented by a demon. But he did not answer her at all. And his disciples came and urged him, saying, Send her away, for she keeps shouting after us. But he answered, I was sent only to the lost sheep of the house of Israel. But she came and knelt before him, saying, Lord, help me. He answered, Is it not fair to take the children's food and throw it to the dogs? She said, Yes, Lord. Yet even the dogs eat the crumbs that fall from their master's table. Then Jesus answered her, Woman, great is your faith. Let it be done for you as you wish. And her daughter was healed instantly. This is the gospel of the Lord. Father yes. God, as we come to sing and praise you in word and deed, may the words that come in the Son bring us comfort and hope for the weekend. This we ask in the name of Jesus Christ, our Lord. I've been a tour guide for small church groups for the last 30 years, going around the road, showing the sites where St. Paul lived, where he was beheaded, where he's buried, and so on. As a favour, I took a group of Americans, and we stayed in one of the houses which welcomed me uh, very graciously on a regular basis. And they loved it there, they were enjoying the food until I told them that if they didn't eat their vegetables at lunchtime, they would get them in the evening as soup. So they didn't eat their carrots, they got carrot lentil soup. They didn't eat their peas, they got pea lentil soup. And they were horrified that they were being made to eat the scraps, as they called them. And not only that, I was asking them to pay for it. But the food was good, and I asked one of the 13 children, take the leftovers and make them into 
suit or ties to something my mother did on a regular basis. And here we have Jesus talking about the banquet meal. And this lady saying that the crumbs that fall from the table, even the dogs, eat the scraps. But food is something we need to be concerned about in our age. I read one report this week that the average British person wastes up to 25% of their food and drinks that they purchase. Either they leave them in the back of the fridge, or the cell by gate goes on them, or it just simply goes wrong because they have so much that they forget what they have. This is a time when one in six of our nation are hungry, and over 800 million people worldwide go to bed feeling hungry on a regular basis. We seem to be living in a time of scarcity, though it's a lifetime of abundance. Yet no one seems to be able to agree on how we should fix this problem. Food, even the meager scraps and crumbs, can be a divisive to topic amongst so many. And yet, from the story that we have just heard, we realise that the same can be said in the time of Jesus as well, as he begins to discuss the food laws with the Pharisees and the Sadducees and the Scribes. Now, Jesus is walking in the territory of Tyre and Sidon, which to most of us means very little, so we need to set the context. Tyre and Sidon was a border area, and Jesus was moving from the Israelites, his own culture of Israel, and moving into the area of the Gentiles, an area which had people with a different history. They worshipped different to, to the time of the Israelites. They even ate differently to Jesus and his disciples. And he's just had this debate about eating and the diet laws and cleanliness. And it may well be that for a Jew, this debate about food laws was the most startling revelation that Jesus had said so far in his ministry. But to us, it doesn't seem such a big deal. Well, you see, for the scribes and the Pharisees, they had made a religion out of doing the right things outwardly. Their external virtue was without question. They would wash their hands several times, the left hand first, then the right hand. Then you would try the left hand, then the right hand. And you would do this on a regular, repeated basis. So much so, they wanted to remain ritually pure, that when they walked down the street, they were frightened that they may walk in the footsteps of a Gentile. So when they got home, they would have to wash their feet in a certain way and their hands so that they could remain ritually pure. The first laws, in many ways, are common sense for hygiene, for medical reasons, and for health. There's no doubt about that, and Jesus doesn't question that. But what had happened here was that the ritual observations of the observances that they were taking had become the very heart of their religion. It wasn't about faith. It was about the outward expression. Inwardly, they were blind and empty. So it's no wonder that the scribes and Pharisees were shocked. The very ground of their religion had just been cut from beneath their feet. And this statement of Jesus was not only alarming, it was revolutionary. Because he was placing things back in context. It's not what we outwardly physically do in terms of ritual that matters in the eyes of God. But it's the state of our hearts. For out of our hearts and out of our minds comes the words and our thoughts which corrupt us. And there's a whole long list that is given by Jesus as to the result of not having a pure heart. So these regulations. I'm not the way forward. Because Jesus is saying to us, religion is easy if you say, I'm not going to eat meat on a Friday. I'm not going to eat pork the rest of the week or for the rest of my life. And I'm going to wash my hands seven times this way, seven times that way. That's the easy part of religion. But what Jesus wants from us is a change of our hearts, a change of the way we live our lives. To put it another way, to love the unlovable, to take part in life with the unlovable, 
to offer forgiveness and mercy when asked, to show love to all. Within the Gospel we find again and again Jesus is on the frontier of the boundaries of what is acceptable within the context of the Jewish culture and that of the Gentile. For instance, we find the story of the Good Samaritan. Was it possible that somebody who was non Jewish could be good in the eyes of God? And here Jesus tells the story. We have a centurion, a Roman, who shows more faith than anybody else in the whole of Israel. Again, faith from somebody outside of the Jewish context. And now we have a Canaanite woman who comes to him, and they all three initiate the relationship with God, requesting God to cross the boundary of faith, tradition, or culture, and go outside that of Israel, and include those who are Gentiles. And Jesus does this. For us as Anglicans, we know this story because it's part of our liturgy. The crumbs that fell to the table Cranmer includes in what I think is, is the crux of Anglicanism, prayer upon the license, in which we say that we accept the crumbs that fall from the table and we ask because God is always merciful. And we will say that as part of our communion service later on. I think Cranmer includes that in the communion service to remind us of the simple nature for which we are, that without the faith in Jesus, without the sacrifice of the cross, there is no hope for us to sit at the table of our God unless Jesus intercedes for us. And in that prayer of our Lord Christ, it reminds us not to become overconfident, but to realize it is only through the graciousness of God that we can receive even the crumbs that fall from the table. And I think this is the crux of our gospel and epistle today. That God's forgiveness, mercy, and blessing is dependent on His goodness, His graciousness towards us, but also that we have faith. And that expression of our faith is not in ritual, because that will save us. It is in the love of God shown through Christ on the cross. And the way that we have faith and how we express that faith in forgiving one another, in helping one another, and being gracious to all, regardless of whether they are Canaanite, Samaritan, or wherever they come from, that we are able to show the love of God to all. And that should stand from our faith in our hearts. And this is what God is calling us to do in the words of Jesus and in the words of Paul, to remind us that it is through His grace that we are forgiven and received into the kingdom of God. So let us pray. Lord Jesus Christ, we give you thanks that even we have received the cross that fall from your table. That through the cross we are forgiven. Through your graciousness we are received. Help us to cling to those thoughts that you are with us, that you receive us, that your grace is bountiful for all because our Saviour died for all. This we ask in the name of Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Could I invite you please to stand? As we say together, the nice thing to do. We believe in one God, the Father of the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally God's own Father, God from God, life from light, true God from true God. Because of my being, of one being with the Father, through him all things were made, for us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven, was incarnate by the Holy Spirit of the Virgin Mary, and was made now. For our sake he was crucified on the conscious side, he suffered death from his head. On the third day he rose again, in accordance with the scriptures, 
He has sent me to heaven. I see him at the right time of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son to judge and to glorify, who has spoken to the cross. We believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. We acknowledge the baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the Lord to come. Amen. Would you please sit on you as we come to our time of prayer? In our prayers this morning, we thank God for all those who work tirelessly in the health services and on the front line of our emergency services. Lord Jesus Christ, we ask you to bless all those who throughout their day, daily work, working day put their lives on the line for us, for our armed forces, for the police, the fire brigade, the ambulance service, the doctors and nurses, and all those who work within the health and care professions. May your Holy Spirit guide them and protect them. May your blessing be upon their families, that they may find healing and hope for the future in all that they do with all that they need. Lord, in your mercy, Amen. we pray for veterans from our armed forces community, especially those who are still alive as we celebrate the 75th anniversary of VJ. Father God, to your son tells us that no greater can anyone do than lay their life down for their colleagues and friends and family, and even for their nation. We give you thanks for all those who have died in the service of their country, so that we may enjoy the freedom of religion, the freedom of life and expression, and enjoy the hope that we have for our children, grandchildren and great-grandchildren for the future. And as we remember those whom we have loved and are with no more, but reside with you upon another shore, we give you thanks for the example they have set for us and ask you to guide us in their ways, that we may be a credit to their name and a blessing to all those whom we love. Lord, in your mercy, we, are there. we pray for our family and friends. Father God, we give you thanks for the blessing of marriage, for the gift of children grandchildren and great-grandchildren. And wherever our children or our partners may be, we ask you to be with them. By your word, that it be a guide to their path. May your Holy Spirit surround them and give them friends who will be good to them. And for those who share our love with us, although we may not say we love you enough, let them know by gesture, by word and deed, that we truly do love them and appreciate all that they do for us. Lord, in your mercy. Yeah. In silence we bring before God our own private prayers and petitions. Heavenly Father, in whom we live and move and have our being, we humbly pray that your Holy Spirit may so guide and govern us that in all the cares and occupations of our daily life, we may never forget your presence. But remember that we are always walking in your sight, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Go before.
before us, Lord, in all our doings, with your most gracious favour, and further us with your continual help, that in all our works begun, continued, and in you, we may glorify your holy name, and finally by your mercy attain everlasting life through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. We sum up our prayers by saying together, Merciful Father, accept these our prayers for the sake of your Son, our Saviour Jesus Christ. Amen. Together we say the prayer of humble access. We do not presume to come to this church to the mercy of the Lord, trusting in our own righteousness, but in your powerful and great mercy. We are not worthy so much as to gather our problems on the earth here, but you are the same God, whose nature is the cause of the mercy. Grant us therefore, gracious Lord, so to be the flesh of your dear Son, Jesus Christ, and to drink his blood. That our sinful bodies may be made clean by His body, and our souls washed in His most precious blood, and that we may have more prayer in Him and He in us. Amen. If you forgive others their sins, your heavenly Father will also forgive you. But if you do not forgive others, neither will your Father forgive your sins. The peace of the Lord be always with you. Creator, sustainer of all things, you may ask in your own image. 
made our snail and female you created us. Even when we were turned away from you, you never ceased to care for us. But in your love and mercy, you freed us from the slavery of sin, giving your only begotten Son to become man and suffer death on the cross to redeem us. He made there the one complete and all sufficient sacrifice for the sins of the whole world. He instituted and in his holy gospel commanded us to continue a perpetual memory of his precious death until he comes again. On the night that he was betrayed, he took bread. And when he had given thanks to you, he broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take, eat. This is my body which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. In the same way after supper, he took the cup, and when he had given thanks, he gave it to him, saying, Drink this, all of you, for this is my blood of the living covenant, which is shed for you and for many, for the forgiveness of sins. Do this as often as you drink it, in remembrance of me. Therefore, Father, with this bread and this cup, we do as Christ your Son commanded, Accept through him our great high priest, this our sacrifice of praise and thanksgiving, and as we eat and drink these holy gifts, grant by the power of your life-giving spirit, that we may be made one in your holy church, and partakers of the body and blood of your Son, that he may dwell in us and we in him. Through the same Jesus Christ, our Lord, by whom and with whom and in whom, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all honor and glory be the Lord's almighty God, forever and ever. Amen. As our Saviour Christ has taught us, so we are bold to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Receive the body of our Lord Jesus Christ, which he gave you, and his blood, which he shed for you. Eat and drink in remembrance that Christ died for you, and feed on him in your hearts by faith and with thanksgiving.
so may your, our lives be a, continu a continual offering, holy and acceptable in your sight, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Together we say, Almighty God, we thank you for feeding us as a spirit of the for the body and blood of your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him we offer you our souls and bodies to be the Go in peace to love and serve the Lord. In the name of Christ.